Welcome to the Ultimate Sports Podcast. Today is Wednesday, November 27th, 2019. Last podcast of the week because of the holiday coming up. Today we'll go through yesterday's college basketball, NBA, NHL, and college football slates and look ahead to today's and the weekend slate NFL power rankings for week 13, as well as my picks for week 14 of college football and week 13 of the NFL, as well as my best bet of the day. Okay. We'll start in college basketball. There's one mega upset. We'll get to it, but we're going to go in, with the games in chronological order pretty much. Drake over Northeastern 59-56. Drake is 5-2, and two, Northeastern 3-4. and four. Colorado State over Loyola, Chicago 61-60. Colorado State's 4-3, and three, Loyola 3-4. and four. Seattle over Western Michigan 59-55. Seattle 3-5, and five, Western Michigan 4-4. Four and four. Gardner-Webb over Tennessee Martin 81-64. Garner Webb gets his first win there, one and five. Tennessee Martin two and four. Murray State over Weber State, 69-68. Murray four and two. Weber one and four. New Mexico State over South Florida, 65-45. New Mexico four and three. And USF three and three. Number three, Michigan State over Georgia, 93-85. Michigan State four and two. Georgia four and two. Anthony Edwards went nuts in that game. Yale over Bucknell, 81-61. Yale five and three. Bucknell three and five. Portland State over Grambling, 84-74. Portland State, 3-3. Three and three. Grambling, 3-3. Three and three. San Francisco over Hampton, 89-73. San Francisco, 7-0. and oh. Hampton, 3-3. Three and three. Northern Colorado over Boston University, 78-55. Northern Colorado, 3-3. Three three. BU, 3-4. Three UC Irvine over Louisiana, 92-67. UC Irvine, 4-4. Four four. Louisiana, 4-3. Four UMass Lowell over Brown, 75-63. UMass Lowell, 3-5. Brown, 4-2. South Alabama over Miami of Ohio, 82-71. South Alabama, 5-2. Miami of Ohio, 4-2. Wazoo over Old Dominion, 66-50. Wazoo, 3-3. Old Dominion, 3-4. UCLA over Chaminade, 74-48. And Maui, UCLA is now 5-2. Caldwell over Norfolk State, 64-54. This was a pretty big upset. Norfolk drops to... Three and four. So a Division two team pulls off the upset. New Mexico over Wisconsin, 59-50. New Mexico, 6-2. Wisconsin, 4-3. So Wisconsin, very disappointing start to their season. Southern over IUPUI, 83-77. Southern, 3-4. IUPUI, 2-5. Wofford over Maryland Eastern, 67-42. Wofford, 3-4. UMass, 0-7. Wichita over South Carolina, 70-47 from Cancun. Wichita is 6-0. and And South Carolina is 4-2. and two. Western Illinois over Ball State, 69-62. Western, 2-4. and four. Ball, 4-3. Four and three. East Tennessee State over App State, 78-69. East Tennessee State, 6-1. and one. App State, 4-4. Four and four. Mount St. Mary's over Utah Valley, 64-61. Uh, Mount St. Mary's, 2-5. and five. Utah Valley, 4-4. Four and four. High Point over Greensboro, 90-73. High Point gets it the first win. They're 1-6. Navy over Cornell, 72-61. Navy, 3-3. Three and three. Cornell, 1-6. and six. Coppin over James Madison, 94-78. Coppin State, 3-5. James Madison, 4-3. UNC Wilmington over Emory and Henry, 122-66. UNC Wilmington is now 5-3 on the season. Notre Dame over Fairleigh Dickinson, 91-66. Notre Dame, 6-1. Fairleigh Dickinson, 1-5. So Notre Dame's only loss was... The Steve's an opener to North Carolina. New Hampshire over over Bryant, 87-76. In overtime, New Hampshire 4-3. Bryant 4-4. Four four. Arizona State over Princeton, 67-65. Arizona State 4-3. Princeton 0-5. St. Bonaventure over Mercer, 56-51. Bonaventure 2-4. Mercer 4-3. Florida Gulf Coast over Florida Tech, 73-59. Florida Gulf Coast is now 2-5. Stetson over Florida College, 72-60. Stetson's 4-4. Four FIU over Kaiser, 96-82. FIU is now 3-3. Three and three. Binghamton over New York Onetta, 90-69. Binghamton is now 4-3. Furman over Alon, 97-61. Furman, 6-1. Alon is 2-5. Citadel over Brevard, 90-47. The Citadel, 3-4. Rutgers over NJIT, 85-58. Rutgers, 5-1. NJIT, 2-5. American over Howard, 86-69. American, 2-3. Howard, 0-8. Delaware State over St. Elizabeth, 90-53. Delaware State gets his first win. They're 1-7. VMI over Goucher, 
92-32. Van Vies, 3-6 on my bad, 98 32. Oklahoma over Mizzou, 77-66. At the Sprint Center, Oklahoma, 6-1. Missouri, 4-3. Number 18, Auburn over Richmond, 79-65. Auburn's still unbeaten. They're 7-0. And Richmond gets their first loss. They're 5-1. William & Mary over Moorhead State, 95-84. William & Mary, 5-2. Moorhead, 4-3. George Mason defeats Nebraska, 85-66. George Mason, 7-1. Nebraska, 3-3. LaSalle over Wright State, 72-70. LaSalle, 3-2. Wright State, 5-2. Monmouth over Radford, 80-63. Monmouth, 3-5. Radford, 2-4. Little Rock over St. Francis, Brooklyn, 67-56. Little Rock, 4-3. Brooklyn, 2-4. Illinois over Lindenwood, 117-65. Illinois, 6-1. Omaha over Loyola, Maryland, 70-65. Omaha, 5-3. Loyola, 3-4. Yule Monroe over Northwestern State, 77-69. Yule Monroe, 3-2. Northwestern State, 2-4. Houston over Houston Baptist, 112-73. Houston, 3-2. Houston Baptist, 0-5. DePaul over Central Michigan, 88-75. DePaul, 7-0. Central Michigan, 5-2. So, DePaul went on a late run in that game to end up covering... The point spread. Colgate over Green Bay, 99-81. Colgate, 4-3. Green Bay, 2-4. Canisius over UIC, 94-64. Canisius, 3-2. UIC, 2-5. UAB over Lamar, 57-48. UAB, 4-1. Lamar, 4-3. Nichols over Blue Mountain, 102-56. Nichols is 4-4. Southern Illinois over NC Central, 64-48. Southern Illinois, 3-4. NC Central, 2-4. Dayton over Virginia Tech, 89-62. As Dayton advances to the Maui Final tonight. Dayton's undefeated, so they're 5 0. Virginia Tech suffers its first loss. They are 6 1. West Virginia over Northern Iowa, 60 55. West Virginia, 5 0, advances to the Cancun title game against Wichita and UNI, 6 1. Here we go. Stephen F. Austin over number one, Duke, 85 83 in overtime. The biggest upset of the season so far, biggest upset in college basketball over the last. 15 years, the biggest win in Stephen F. Austin program history. Obviously, they did get some big tournament wins against West Virginia, most notably a few years ago. Stephen F. Austin's 5-1, and one, and Duke is 6-1. and one. So, um, Nathan Bain steals the ball and hits a layup at the buzzer in overtime as Stephen F. Austin pulls off the outright upset. This was an absolute stunner, and this obviously surpasses the Evansville over Kentucky upset as the upset of the season, barring a random 16 over one in the tournament or something like that. Montana State over Colorado Christian, 82-46. Montana is 5-2. and two. TCU over Wyoming, 64-47. TCU 5-1, and one, Wyoming 3-5. and five. Eastern Washington over Belmont, 87-82. Eastern Washington 4-2, and two, Belmont 4-3. and three. North Dakota over North Dakota Central, 115-50. North Dakota's 2-4. Butler over Stanford, 68-67. What was a classic name? A game-winning three by Kamar Baldwin. It was a game-winning shot, not a three-pointer. Um, Butler is 7-0. Stanford suffers their first loss. They're now 7-1, but in all likelihood, a good loss because that was a close game on a neutral. And Stanford is a much better team than anticipated as they covered the points spread in that one. Pacific over SIU Edwards, 78-50. Pacific 6-3, SIU 2-5. North Dakota State over Idaho, 70-53. North Dakota State, 5-3, Idaho 3-4. Cal over UC Davis, 72-66. Cal 5-2, UC Davis 2-6. UNLV over Jackson State, 80-57. UNLV 3-5, Jackson State 1-6. UC Riverside over Longwood, 71-58. UC Riverside 5-2, Longwood 4-3. Number four, Kansas over BYU, 71-56. Kansas, 5-1, BYU, 4-3. Sam Houston State over Cal State, Bakersfield, 74-65. Sam Houston State, 3-3, Bakersfield, 2-5. And, and number 21, Colorado over Clemson, 71-67. Colorado, 5-0. And, and Clemson is 5-2. and two. All right, a couple final already today. Loyola Chicago over Old Dominion, 68-61. The Cayman Islands Classic. Loyola, 4-4, four four, Old Dominion is 3-5. Northeastern over Weber State, 79-69. Northeastern, 4-4, four four, Weber State, 1-5. Going on right now in the second quarter, or second half, West Carolina and Bryan, and 
Iowa State, Michigan in battle for Atlantis. And then Cancun at halftime right now, Tennessee Martin in Boston University. About to get underway at 1.30 in the Cayman Islands Classic, Colorado State and Washington State. Murray State and Drake in the Gulf Coast Showcase. 2 o'clock, St. Louis and Boston College, SC State and Tulsa. Charlotte, Georgia State, 2.30 ESPN 2. Number 3, Michigan State against UCLA and Maui. So this is the 5th place game. And it's amazing because I think a lot of people thought that um, this was like a dark horse chance to be the title game. I know a lot of people are anticipating Michigan State, Kansas, but it's actually going to be Dayton, Kansas, as insane as that is. But yeah, ESPN 2, the fifth place game, Sparty State by 14. This was the same line against Virginia Tech and the same line about as Georgia. So you're telling me that UCLA is literally the same as those two teams. I'm going to take the points with UCLA. I think Sparty will win, but I think it's like a 10-point win for Sparty rather than a 15. Battle for Atlanta, 230 ESPN, number 6, North Carolina and Alabama. Carolina is a 9-point favorite. They have the best player on the court in Cole Anthony in this game, although Alabama has a hell of a player too in Kira Lewis Jr. But Anthony and the role guys on Carolina that have been in big games before will carry them to the win, and I think they'll win this by double digits. Mississippi Valley State in North Alabama, 3 o'clock. Texas Arlington and Furman. Gardner-Webb in Northern Colorado in Cancun Challenge. 4 o'clock, Maine in number 7, Virginia. Virginia should have no issue there. Manhattan, Rhode Island, 5 o'clock, ESPN 2. Ole Miss, Penn State. Penn State's giving 2.5. NIT season tip-off. This is at the Barkley Center. Um, tough one. I'm going to go with Penn State. The best player on the court in this game is Lamar Stevens. They're 5-0. and oh. Ole Miss has one loss right and it was to the James Wiseman list Memphis team. Maybe Memphis is a little better than uh, we think without uh, Weissman there. And we have news on Weissman, which I'm going to get to eventually. Um, going to go with Penn State, best player on the court. And they should win this game by seven. Denver and Santa Clara in the Cable Car Classic. That is in Levy Center in Santa Clara. So it's a Santa Clara home game. South Florida and Nebraska, Cayman Islands. South Florida is giving two and a half. Um, I'm going to take Nebraska in the points. Um, I'm not a fan of what I've seen from either of these teams this year, but I just think that Nebraska is better than South Florida right now, and they have the better coach. Miami of Ohio and Wright State Gulf Coast Showcase. Number four, Kansas against Dayton in the Maui final. Kansas is only a four-point favorite. I think a lot of people are bumping on the Dayton bandwagon led by star player Obi Toppin, who I think could be a lottery pick in the 2020 NBA draft. This is tough. I would have made this Kansas by maybe 7 or 8, so I'm going to take Kansas minus the 4. I think Devin Dotson and Zika Azabuki will lead the way for them to the Maui Championship. 6 o'clock, Kansas State and Bradley in Fort Myers. Kansas State's giving five and a half. I'm going to take the Wildcats to win and cover. Third place game in Cancun, South Carolina, Northern Iowa. South Carolina's giving one. I'm going to take Northern Iowa here. I like what I saw from them against West Virginia yesterday. Meanwhile, South Carolina no-showed against Wichita State. So I'm going to take Northern Iowa getting the one. I think they win the game on the field. They have good three-point shooting. They play defense. And I think this is a team that can surprise some people in the Mountain Valley this year. 7 o'clock ESPNU, Gonzaga against Southern Miss in the battle for Atlantis. Gonzaga's giving 24.5. I'm going to take Gonzaga to cover but barely. Hartford and SMU, Niagara, Purdue, Fort Wayne, Geneva and Robert Morris, Norfolk State, Monmouth, Westminster, Pennsylvania and Youngstown State, Stony Brook and Delaware, Gallaudet in Vermont, ESPN2, Oklahoma State and Syracuse from the Barclays Center, Oklahoma State is giving two. This is tough. 
I think Bayheim is better as an underdog than he is as a favorite. So I'm going to take Bayheim and Syracuse getting to Elijah Hughes, best player on the court. So give me the orange here. They are F FBI favorites as well. So give me Syracuse getting the two. And what should you have? Pro Syracuse crowd at the Barclays Center. 7.30 Southeast Missouri State and Cal State Fullerton. South Alabama and LaSalle. New Mexico State and George Mason. New Mexico State's giving five and a half. I'm taking George Mason in the five and a half. I think George Mason wins outright. I'm really impressed with what I've seen with that team this year. And for the other two, uh, Cable Car, um, Fullerton, Missouri State. Fullerton is giving five. I'm going to take Fullerton to win and to cover. LaSalle, South Alabama. South Alabama is giving five. I'm taking LaSalle in the points. I think LaSalle can win. Alcorn State in Little Rock. Trinity in Valpo at eight. Sanford, South Dakota State. 8.30, CBS Sports Network, Cancun Challenge, Wichita State, West Virginia. Championship game. West Virginia is favored by one. Um, so Vegas is suggesting that these two teams are even, but they're giving the extra point to West Virginia. And I don't know why, but... This is a tough call. Both these teams have been really good this year. I think this will be a low-scoring game. West Virginia probably does have the best player on the court, potentially, with Jermaine Haley. The coaching edge, I think it's a wash. Eric Stevenson's been very good for Wichita this year. Mountaineers are a deeper team. They're FBI favorites. This is probably the toughest call tonight. Give me... I was going to initially say Wichita State, but I'm going to go with West Virginia. I think the numbers favor them. They're the deeper team. And in the words of John Rothstein from CBS Sports Network, they are tougher than a long weekend at your in-laws. So give me the Mountaineers. I think it's another close one down there in Cancun. But if the spread was bigger, if West Virginia was giving like three or four, I would take Wichita. But it's just saying pick them. I think West Virginia wins by, like, maybe two or three points. Pitt and Northwestern. Pitt's giving two and a half in Fort Myers. Um, I am going to lay the two and a half with Pitt. They've been playing better of late since they lost to West Virginia, so give me Pitt. ESPNU, Georgia and Chaminade. That is the last place game. I think Georgia's going to win. They'll probably cover as well. East Central and UTEP. West Coast Baptist and Idaho State, 9.30 ESPN2, Oregon and Seton Hall, 11 versus 13. Seton Hall is giving two. I'm very surprised that Seton Hall is favored in this game. I'm taking the Ducks getting the points. I think the Ducks are the better team, led by Peyton Pritchard. They're heavy BPI favorites at 63.6%, although... I won't be surprised if Seton Hall wins because they have one of those guys in the sport that gives you a chance to win any game, and that's Miles Powell. But give me Oregon getting the points. I think they win this game by five points. 10 o'clock, you have South Dakota and Cal Baptist. Portland State in Santa Barbara. Hofstra, San Diego. 11 o'clock, Fox Sports 1. Oregon State and San Jose State. From Vegas, Oregon State's giving 20. And I think San Jose State can potentially hang around, but Oregon State has the best player on the court in Trez Trinkle, and I think that they are um, the much better team. So I'm going to say they win, but barely, barely, barely cover, like win by 22. And in Maui, for the third-place game on ESPN2, Virginia Tech and BYU, Virginia Tech's only giving one. I think that's a steal with the Hokies. They are the much better team than BYU. BYU has some talent. They have a good player in Jake Toulson, but um, I just think that Vatek's better and is going to win and cover. Thanksgiving, there's a couple games that are to be determined, obviously, Battle for Atlantis and whatnot. So while I think about that, um, about who I'm going to pick to win Battle for Atlantis and whatnot, I'll go through tomorrow's slate. That's actually um, official. So from Orlando, you have Maryland against Temple. Maryland's number five. Temple 
is unranked. Both teams undefeated. I would bank this game Maryland by 12 and a half. And um, I think that Maryland will win and they'll cover my projected number. Texas Arlington and Elon, 1 o'clock ESPN 2 from Orlando, A&M and Harvard. A&M's going to be a big favorite in that game. They'll win and probably cover. Battle for Atlanta semifinal will probably be North Carolina and if you asked me to pick the winner of Iowa State and Michigan before the tip-off, I would have picked Michigan. So my projected is Michigan and Carolina. Two teams that have won a lot of big games over the last three, four years. Obviously, Michigan is a new coach in Juwan Howard. They're off to a great start. But best player on the court, Cole Anthony. They should get by Michigan. I believe that's the same bracket. I could be wrong, though. Tennessee State and Cal Poly. Providence and Long Beach State on ESPNU. NC State against number 16 Memphis from the Barclays Center. Memphis is way better than NC State, so they should win and cover. The other um, battle for Atlantis game, um, I'm going to project uh, the losers. to be Iowa State and Alabama. I'm assuming that's who would face off. And I would take Alabama there because they have the best player on the court in that game. ESPNU, USC, and Fairfield from Orlando. I would take USC there. and They'd win that by double digits. Wake and Charleston on ESPN News and the Wooden Legacy. Wake had an impressive ass-kicking win over Davidson. I think they can do it again. Charleston's a, not a terrible team. Wake Forest, I know they're playing for Danny Manning and whatnot, so give me Wake in that one. Long Island and North Florida from Vegas. I would take North Florida. From Orlando, Davidson and Marquette. That's a great game. Kellen Grady, Marcus Howard, John Axel Gunmanson. I would take Marquette and Marcus Howard there. Davidson's been a little bit of an underachiever. And on the other side of the bracket, so it would be the final in, or the second round of the uh, battle for Atlantis, which would be obviously um, I project Oregon to beat Seton Hall. And the other game from battle for Atlantis would be Gonzaga. So it'd be Gonzaga against Oregon, so that's funny. So a lot of teams that were in the Final Four of 2017 are in this Carolina, Gonzaga, Oregon. All they were missing was South Carolina, but they decided to go to Cancun instead of uh, uh, Battle for Atlanta. So um, I project Oregon and Gonzaga in the semifinal. In that game, I just love Oregon in big games. Like, Kelly and Tilly has been playing for Gonzaga, but um, I just think that... Uh, Big game Oregon will come through. And then on the loser side of that side of the bracket would be Seton Hall against. Um, uh, I'm blanking. Um, Southern Miss. And then Seton Hall would win that game by double digits. So back to Thanksgiving. Um, number 12, Texas Tech against Iowa from Vegas. I would take Texas Tech there, Chris Beard. ESPNU, UCF, and Penn in the Wooden Legacy. I take Penn there in the upset. And then Battle for Atlantis. We just talked about that. Um, San Diego State and Creighton at 10.30 from Vegas. Tough one. San Diego State undefeated. Creighton's a good team. I'll take Creighton in that one. And then Pepperdine and Arizona on ESPN2 in the Wooden Legacy. Arizona is going to cream Pepperdine. Friday. A lot of TBDs on here. TBD in the Orlando Invitational. Um, I don't really know how that bracket will shake out. So I'll go through what's, like, official, and then I'll predict the winners of all the tournaments. How about that? So 11.30 Orlando Invitational game and in Battle for Atlanta's game. 12 o'clock Chicago State, Jacksonville State. 1 o'clock Eureka College, in or-, or I'm sorry, New Orleans. 1.30 Orlando Invitational game. 2 o'clock UMass Rutgers. West Coast Baptist, Southern Utah, Kentucky Christian Liberty. 
Battle for Atlanta at 2 o'clock. Wooden Legacy game at 2 o'clock. 2.30, Alabama State and Chattanooga. Illinois Springfield at Illinois State at 3 o'clock. DePaul, Minnesota. 4 o'clock, Orlando Invitational. Wooden Legacy. 4.30, Campbell in Georgia Southern. 5 o'clock, Louisville, Western Kentucky. SMU Edwardsville, Riverside. Southeast Missouri State, Santa Clara. 6.30, Evan Orlando game. 7 o'clock, Winthrop against number one, Duke. We'll see how Duke bounces back after the loss. UAB against number nine, Kentucky. CBS Sports Network, Emerald Coast Classic. Tennessee, number 17, Tennessee against Florida State. Um, tough call here. Leonard Hamilton's team always shows up for big games and always underwhelms against lesser teams. I think this is close, but Tennessee wins. As well, it's 7 o'clock NIT season tip-off of ESPN2. Merrimack and Akron, Maryland Eastern in Delaware, North Dakota, Florida Gulf Coast, Holy Cross and FAU in the Boca Raton Beach Classic. Friday night, 7 o'clock, um, Battle for Atlantis. 7.30, Denver and Cal State Florida. 8 o'clock, SEC Network Plus, Missouri State and LSU. Abilene Christian and SMU. 9 o'clock, Big Ten Network, Morgan State against number 10, Ohio State. SEC Network, Florida, number 24, Florida against Marshall. UNC Wilmington, Boise State, Coppin State, Montana, ESPN News, Friday Night, Wooden Legacy Game, Pac-12 Network, UC Davis and Utah, Emerald Coast Classic on CBS Sports Network, Friday Night, 9.30, number 20, VCU against Purdue. VCU's been on a roll. Purdue's been underachieving, so give me VCU there. As well, at 9.30, you have a battle for Atlantis game in the NIT season tip-off, 10 o'clock, Longwood and Pacific, Hampton and Cal State Bakersfield, Grambling and UC Santa Barbara, 11.30, number 15, Utah State against St. Mary's. Really good game. I think this is a good opportunity for St. Mary's to get a good win against a ranked opponent on their resume. I think St. Mary's gets it done at home. ESPN 2, you have a wooden legacy game and at midnight Eastern on Friday night, San Francisco and Hawaii. Saturday, 10 o'clock in the morning, American and Albany. 12 o'clock, Lipscomb and number 25, Xavier, Wagner, St. John's, Moore State and North Alabama, St. Francis, Brooklyn, St. Peter's, Drexel, UMKC. Those two games I just said are 1 o'clock games. Detroit Mercy in Ohio, South Dakota and Northern Arizona. That's a 2 o'clock game as well as Siena, Colgate, Princeton, Bucknell, Missouri, St. Louis, and Indiana State, William & Mary, Buffalo, Jacksonville, NCAT, McNeese in Texas, Greensboro, Georgetown, 2.30 NBCSN, Boston College in Richmond, 3 o'clock East Tennessee State in Little Rock, Montana Tech, BYU, Randall, Sam Houston State, Shorter, Troy, 4 o'clock Dartmouth in Bowling Green, Mount St. Mary's Howard, Southeast Missouri State, Denver, South Carolina Upstate in Charlotte, Toccoa Falls in Presbyterian, Navy Brown, Lehigh, Columbia, South Dakota State, Indiana, East Carolina, James Madison, Stetson and Kent State in the Buckeye Classic. North Dakota State and Georgia Southern at 4.30. I'm sorry, it's just North Dakota. Youngstown State, Central Michigan, 5 o'clock, Stephen F. Austin in Arkansas State. I want to see how the Lumberjacks look after that win. Northern Kentucky against Arkansas. Hartford and Texas State at 5.30. 6 o'clock, Robert Morris in Cleveland State. Coastal Carolina and Delaware State. Fresno State and Cal State Northridge, Cal State Fullerton and Santa Clara at 6.30, 7 o'clock, Oakland and Toledo, Evansville, IUPUI, New Hampshire, FIU, Campbell, Florida, Gulf Coast, Xavier, Louisiana, New Orleans, St. Francis, Pennsylvania, St. Joe's, UNLV, Cincinnati, Army, Marist, Prairie View, New TSA, 8 o'clock, and I'm Corpus Christi in Texas, Rio Grande, by the way, Prairie View, UTSA, 8 o'clock as well, um, Tulsa, Vandy, Green Bay, Montana State, Western Illinois and UMKC, Purdue, Fort Wayne, Grand Canyon, Lamar and Texas Southern, 830 Belmont, Middle Tennessee, 9 o'clock Sacramento State and number 21 Colorado, Sanford and Louisiana Tech, San Diego Christian and Cal State Bakersfield at 10 o'clock, as well as Idaho and Seattle, and last but not least, Eastern Michigan against UC Irvine. Sunday, Orlando Invitational Final, um, Hilton Garden Inn, FGCU Classic, North Dakota and Campbell. Boca Raton Beach Classic, Mercer and Canisius. Or the Orlando game, one of the Orlando games is at 10.30. And the first two games I listed were at 12 o'clock. 1 o'clock, you have Central Connecticut State and UMass Lowell. Main UConn. 1 o'clock, ESPN Orlando Invitational. I guess that's the final. 1.30, Wooden Legacy game. 2 o'clock, Pine Minor and Sacred Heart. 
2 o'clock Southern in Tulane, Maryland Eastern in Fordham, Rhode Island, West Virginia, George Washington, South Carolina, 3 o'clock Vermont, Yale, Hopes for Holy Cross, Montana, New Mexico, 3.30 Wooden Legacy, 4 o'clock Southern Utah and Marymount, Orlando Invitational Game at 4 o'clock, Southern Illinois and St. Louis, Towson, Cornell, Wilmington, Stanford, Niagara, Norfolk State, Jackson State Air Force, Utah Valley, and Colorado State at 4.30, Georgia Southern and Florida Gulf Coast, Portland State and Oregon State on the Pac-12 Network at 6 o'clock, UIC and FIU, Orlando Invitational Game at 6 o'clock, Bethune-Cookman, Georgia Tech, Binghamton, Loyola, Maryland, Wooden Legacy Game, 6.30, LaSalle and number 22, Villanova, 8 o'clock, San Jose State, UCLA, Incarnate Word, Portland, Omaha, St. Mary's, 9 o'clock, ESPN, Wooden Legacy Final, 9 o'clock as well, St. Bonaventure, San Diego, and the Boca Raton Beach Classic, and 10 o'clock, you have Hawaii Pacific against Hawaii. All right, now I'm going to predict the uh, the winners of all the tournaments, so... Battle for Atlantis, I think the winner of that tournament will be the North Carolina Tar Heels. I just think they're the best team in this tournament, and I think they'll win it over Oregon, assuming that those two teams are in the same bracket. Orlando Invitational. You have Maryland and Temple, Texas A&M and Harvard, USC Fairfield, Davidson Marquette. If I had to pick the winner of that tournament blindly... I am going to go with Maryland. The Vegas Invitational, Tennessee State, Cal Poly. You have Long Island and North Florida. Number 12, Texas Tech in Iowa. And San Diego State in Creighton. I'm going to take Texas Tech. I think they're the best team in that tourney. The Wooden Legacy. You have Providence, Long Beach State. Wake Forest and Charleston, UCF and Penn, and Pepperdine and number 14, Arizona. I am going to take Arizona to win this tournament. I think the loss of Weissman will hurt Memphis, so I think Arizona will win that tournament on Sunday, December 1st, so... Those tournaments should be a lot of fun, and we'll recap them all for you on Monday, December 2nd. Now we'll get into NBA. I know I did a half an hour on college basketball, but there's just so much to go over at all those tournaments and whatnot. So without further ado, here we go. Only two games on the slate last night. Clippers over to Mavericks, 114.99. Best bet gone wrong. Clippers 13 and 5, Dallas 11 and 6. Note to self, never bet against the Clippers when both stars are playing. Unless if there's another like random injury that um, is secretly uh, not great, like a potential or a possible uh, Lou Williams injury or something like that. And the Nuggets over to Wizards 117, 104. Denver 13 and 3, Washington 5 and 10. All right, tonight's a big slate. Pretty much everybody's playing. 7 o'clock, you have the Magic at the Cavs, the Jazz at the Pacers, ESPN, Nets at the Celtics. Celtics are giving a whopping 8. No Kyrie Irving, no Karis LeVert, and Kemba Walker returns for Boston tonight. On the call, the game, if I had to guess, I'd say Mike Breen and Hubie Brown, but I don't feel good about it. I am going to take the Celtics to win this game and cover the 8. Despite no Kyrie Irving, I think that the Celtics are going to show up and want to play hard. And they hate the Nets. I mean, like, it's a division rival. Obviously, they hate him more than ever now with the uh, um, departure of Kyrie Irving. So, um, I like the Celtics there to cover the number. Kings at the Sixers. Pistons at the Hornets. 7.30 Knicks at the Raptors. 8 o'clock Hawks at the Bucks. Clippers at the Grizzlies. Heat at the Rockets. 8.30, Timberwolves at the Spurs. 9 o'clock, Wizards at the Suns. 9.30, Lakers at the Pelicans. Lakers giving six on the road. On the call this game, if I had to guess, I'd say Dave Pash and Jeff Van Gundy. Don't feel good about it, though. Could be Breen on this one and Dave Pash on the other or whatever. Actually, no. It can't be Dave Pash because he's doing college basketball. So, um, 
Ryan Rufko and Jeff Van Gundy. So, Lakers giving six. Anthony Davis has returned to New Orleans. He's going to get heavily booed. He might get booed as loudly as Kristaps Porzingis did at MSG and as loudly as Kyrie Irving will get booed once he inevitably is healthy and be playing for the Nets in Boston. So, give me the Pelicans getting the six. I think the Pelicans actually win this game outright. Second of a back-to-back for the Lakers, I think. Actually, no. Um, they're not on a back-to-back. My bad. Um, they're the back-to-back road games. They're not necessarily back-to-back nights. But I just am feeling upset here. I think that Davis could be rattled. But if anybody can save this team's ass, it's LeBron James. Won't be surprised if the Lakers win in cover, but I just have a funny feeling that the Pelicans on the night before Thanksgiving will be up to play. This is their Super Bowl. I think J.J. Redick will have a big game. It's unfortunate that Zion's not there. I think that the ex-Lakers like Lonzo Ball and Brandon Ingram will have big games. Josh Hart will have a couple threes. So give me the Pelicans getting six, and I think they win the game outright. Maybe 120-117 in overtime. We're calling this game to be an overtime game. 10 o'clock, the Thunder at the Blazers, and 10.30, the Bulls at the Warriors. In terms of my best play, I just said it, it's the Pelicans getting six. I think that, like I said, Redick and the X-Lakers will all get up for this game. Drew Holiday with a big game. And I won't be floored if Anthony Davis is riddled. So give me the Pelicans getting six. I think they win the game outright. On Friday, so no, obviously, basketball on Thanksgiving. So Friday afternoon at 12 o'clock, you have the Celtics at the Nets. So the second of a home and home for those two teams. 7 o'clock, Raptors at the Magic. Hornets at the Pistons. 7.30, Bucks at the Cavs. 76ers at the Knicks. 8 o'clock, Warriors Heat. Hawks, Pacers. Pelicans, Thunder. Jazz, Grizzlies. 8.30, Clippers, Spurs. 9 o'clock, Mavericks, Suns. 10 o'clock, Bulls, Trailblazers. 10.30, NBA TV, Wizards, Lakers. And if I already had to make a blind best bet for Friday, it's Oklahoma City assuming New Orleans picks off the Lakers. So if New Orleans picks off the Lakers tonight, I am betting Oklahoma City Friday night. Saturday, only four games. 5 o'clock Nuggets Kings, 7 o'clock NBA TV, Pacers, 76ers, 8 o'clock Hawks, Rockets, and Hornets, Bucks. And if I had the blind bet any of these, This would be tough, but I would take Indiana as a dog against the Sixers, assuming the Sixers beat the Knicks on Friday night. So if not, if the Sixers somehow lose to the Knicks on Friday night in an upset, then I'm taking Philly on Saturday for sure. Sunday, big slate, 3 o'clock, Heat Nets, 3.30, Celtics Knicks, Grizzlies Timberwolves, 4 o'clock, Mavericks Lakers, 5 o'clock, Thunder Pelicans, Spurs Pistons, 6 o'clock, Jazz Raptors, Warriors Magic, and 10.30, Wizards Clippers. A potential best bet on the board. Um, If I had the blind bet something, that would be tough because I'm not sure if anybody's on a back-to-back or not. No, it doesn't look like anybody's on a back-to-back. But depending on the line, if Jazz Raptors, if that number is below 6, I'm taking Toronto. That would be, like, my random best play for Sunday in the NBA. Now we'll talk hockey. Um, Yesterday's slate, I don't think, was that big. I may have to double-check. No, it wasn't. It was only three games. I was right. Um, Bruins over the Canadians, 8-1, led by a hat trick by David Pasternak. Boston, 16-3-5. Montreal, 11-8-5. Wild over the Devils 3 to 2, New Jersey drops to 8 11 and 4 and Minnesota improves to 10 11 and 4. Blackhawks over the Stars 3 nothing. Blackhawks 10 9 and 5, Dallas 15 9 and 2. Heavy slate tonight 7 o'clock, the Hurricanes at the Rangers, Flames at the Sabres, Bruins at the Senators, Maple Leafs at the Red Wings, Blues at the Lightning, Canucks at the Pelicans or the Penguins, my bad. Panthers Capitals NBCSN Flyers Blue Jackets. I don't know who's going to be on the call for this game. Because, obviously, I think Kenny Albert's on the Knicks. I know Doc Emmerich's a lock of the call Friday afternoon's game between the Rangers and the Bruins on the big NBC. 
John Forslund's going to be at the Garden calling the Hurricanes against the Rangers. Brendan Burke's on the West Coast with the Islanders. Unless if Albert's available and he does this game and Mike Breen or Ed Cohen does the Knicks. So maybe it is Kenny Albert tonight. We'll see. Um, I think Kenny Albert's going to be in Toronto at the Knicks. So I don't know who will be on the call of this game. It's just funny how uh, Mike Breen determines the hockey schedule on NBCSN. And obviously Kenny Albert is the Rangers announcer. So it's like the Knicks and the Rangers determine the schedules for nationally televised broadcasts for ESPN and NBCSN, which I think is pretty funny with the two New York teams with their announcers. Well, one of them's their TV guy, the other's the radio guy. But yeah, I don't know who will be on the call this game. Maybe it's Gordon Miller and uh, Ray Ferraro. That would be interesting. That's my prediction. I'm going to go with that as my guess for uh, who calls this game. Um, Both these teams have been kind of on and off lately. I like how Columbus plays at home. I'm going to take the Blue Jackets here to get it done again at home. They beat the Senators the other day. I think they'll pick off Philly here at home as a slate favorite. 8 o'clock, Golden Knights, Predators. 9.30, 9.30, Ducks, Coyotes, 10 o'clock, Oilers, Avalanche, 10.30, Islanders, Kings, and Jets, Sharks. If I had another pick for you guys, the Rangers are a big underdog tonight at home against Carolina. That's going to be my hockey play for tonight because I'm give, just giving out picks. It's Thanksgiving for crying out loud. So, gave out a couple picks in college basketball for the weekend, um, depending on lines. Same with the NBA. And I'll do it for the rest of the hockey as well. So the the Rangers tonight on the money line are plus 130. I think that's a nice price over a Carolina team that the Rangers have already beaten this year. So give me the Rangers as a home dog tonight against Carolina. Plus the Rangers, I don't think, have lost a home game since that overtime loss against the Coyotes about two weeks ago or whatever. There's actually a game on Thanksgiving. It's the Devils and the Canadians from um, the Bell Center in Montreal. So a surprising game on Thanksgiving. I know that um, because it's Thanksgiving and you give out picks on Thanksgiving. I'm going to take Montreal here to bounce back from that bad, bad, bad loss. They're a slim favorite in this game. Against a New Jersey team that's been struggling. So give me Montreal here to bounce back. Friday, 1 o'clock, Big NBC, Rangers Bruins. That's going to be Doc Emmerich, Eddie Olchek, and... Do you think they'll throw Pierre Maguire on for the Big NBC? I'm going to say yes. For Big NBC games only, they'll throw Pierre on with them. Wednesday night rivalry and all that junk is uh, Brian Boucher. But I think this game, they'll see Maguire... 4 o'clock, Maple Leafs, Sabres, Red Wings, Flyers, Avalanche, Blackhawks, Senators, Wild, Jets, Ducks, Kings, Sharks. 5 o'clock, Lightning, Capitals. That's a great game. Coyotes, Golden Knights at 6 o'clock. 7 o'clock, Penguins, Blue Jackets. 7.30, Predators, Hurricanes. 8.30, Blue Stars. If I had the blind bet something, like I said, I kind of like the underdog thing. But a game that kind of interests me a little bit. I want to see Toronto and how uh, they look a little bit. Maybe I'll take them against the Sabres team that's absolutely struggled of late. So my blind best bet for Friday without really knowing point totals and whatnot, or I should say uh, the lines and the goal line and whatnot and the side total, I would go with uh, the Maple Leafs here. Saturday. 1 o'clock, Rangers, Devils from the Rock. 3 o'clock, Flyers, Canadians. 7 o'clock, Sabres, Maple Leafs, Capitals, Red Wings, Hurricanes, Lightning, Predators, Panthers, Blue Jackets, Islanders, Senators, Flames. 8 o'clock, Penguin Blues. Sharks, Coyotes. 9 o'clock, second of a home and home with the Blackhawks and the Avalanche for the seven from Colorado. 10 o'clock, Canucks, Oilers, and Jets, Kings. If I had the blind bet something, I'd go with the Blues over to Penguins. The Blues have been playing pretty good hockey since... Um, the injury of Vlad Tarasenko, surprisingly enough. They're the reigning champions. They're home. Pittsburgh's been kind of blah. So give me uh, St. Louis at home against Pittsburgh as like my blind back for Saturday for hockey. 
Three games on Sunday, 3 o'clock, the Stars at the Wild, the Canadians at the Bruins on Sunday night, and then 10 o'clock would be the Oilers and the Canucks. If I had the blind bet something, go with the Canucks. They might be a dog at home against the Oilers. So I would take them in that division game at home. Now we're going to go over the college football games from last night. Only two games. There were action games. One of them was a blowout, and the other one was a close one. Ohio over Akron, fifty-two to three. Ohio six and six. Akron, zero and twelve. So Ohio clinches a bowl game, and Akron goes winless. This is the first time I can remember a winless team, maybe in a few years. But I saw a number the other day that five of the last six seasons that there's been a winless team in college football. So Akron, I think, will most likely be the only uh, 0 for team this year. And then Ohio, obviously, um, bowl game bound, um, underachieving year for them. I thought that they'd win their division this year going away, but they obviously did not. Northern Illinois upsets Western Michigan 17-14. Northern Illinois was 5-7. and seven. Western Michigan 7-5. Had Northern Illinois not lost last week, they'd be in a bowl game. So, disappointing finish of the year for Northern Iowa, or Northern Illinois, my bad. And then Western Michigan 7-5. and five. Obviously, they're bowling. So, I'll get to the rest of the picks and whatnot for college football in a couple minutes after I do a few quick things. James Weissman, there's news on him that has just been broken by the Athletics' Shams Charimia. He reports that James Weissman's 12-game suspension and 11,500 fine has been upheld. This should come to us as no surprise whatsoever. He will be cleared to play on January 12th, so they'll be in conference play by the time he's back. Um, so we'll see how they do without Weissman. The NC State game's important. I do think they'll get that win without Weissman, but if they don't, then there's going to be a lot of uh, like head scratching and whatnot. So I'm interested to see how they look there. And they have a couple other interesting non-con games coming up as well. They ended up beating Ole Miss the other day, which um, was big for them, especially without Weissman. That just shows that Penny Hardaway is doing a good job with this team, regardless of the Weissman situation. It's out of their heads, and he has those other freshman kids playing pretty well. So... Good job by Penny Hardaway. Now I'm going to do my NFL power rankings for week number 13 of the season. I go from 32 to 1, as I do each and every week. 32 is the Cincinnati Bengals. They're just absolutely trash. Andy Dalton is starting on Sunday against the Jets. 32 is the Miami Dolphins. They're obviously trash, reverted back in the trash last week against the Bills. And now they are playing the Eagles coming up. 30s, the Redskins. They got off the schneid and got a win against the Lions the other day. But the big story that everybody was talking about was Dwayne Haskins missing the final snap to take a selfie with the fan. 29s, the New York Football Giants. Losers of seven in a row. Good chance there's eight in a row um, with Aaron Rodgers coming to town off a loss. But I do think that Daniel Jones has shown some signs that he could be a franchise quarterback, so that's good news for them. 28th of the Detroit Lions. This team's absolutely hapless. Just lost to the Redskins. Now they have the Bears tomorrow on Thanksgiving. 27th, the Denver Broncos. Another hapless team. They just lost to the Bills. Um, oh, and by the way, I meant to say the Browns, not the Bills, regarding the Dolphins and who they recently lost to. Um, so the Broncos just lost to the Bills, coming up for them in the division game against the Chargers. Drew Locke might start this game, so I'm interested to see how he looks. 
26 is the Arizona Cardinals. Interesting game for them on Sunday against a Rams team that got their ass kicked on Monday night. Number 25 is the Atlanta Falcons. They've been playing better football, although they just lost to the Bucks on Sunday, who are number 24. Um, Jameis Winston was all over the place on Sunday, but most importantly, they got the win. Next up for them is the Jaguars. 23 is the New York Jets. They are out of the bottom five. They're playing good football right now. Sam Darnold has looked like he's taken the next step after they hit rock bottom after that loss to the Dolphins. He plays well against the Giants. He plays well against the Redskins, and he plays very well against the Raiders. Let's see if he can make it four straight good games. 22 is the Los Angeles Chargers. Um, a good um, scheduling break potentially coming up with the Broncos, depending on who they start at quarterback. But the bottom line is that this team just continues to underachieve under Anthony Lynn, and I think that's a coach that could potentially be fired at the end of the season. Number 21 is the Cleveland Browns. They've been playing a lot better football. The biggest game of their season, though, is Sunday against the Steelers. And number 20 is the Jacksonville Jaguars. They just lost against the Titans. Next up for them, they have the Bucks. 19 is the Chicago Bears. Just beat the Giants, courtesy of their defense playing well. Next up for them is against the Lions tomorrow on Thanksgiving. Um... 18 is Pittsburgh Steelers. They bench Mason Rudolph for Delvin Hodges, who will get the start on Sunday against the Browns in what is the biggest game of their season. 17 is the Philadelphia Eagles. This team just, just looked really bad. Like, I was disgusted of how horrible Carson Wentz looked the other day against the trash Seahawks defense. But they're in the get-right spot coming up against the Dolphins, and they better get right. Pressure's on them. I think they're under the most pressure this week of any team in the NFL. 16 is the Tennessee Titans. Um, they are coming off the win over the Jags at home. Next up, the Colts. So that won't be an easy task. 15 is the Carolina Panthers. They showed a lot of heart in their comeback effort against the New Orleans Saints, but Joey Sly misses the kick, and they are now under 500. And now the playoff race in the NFC. 14 is the Oakland Raiders. Um, just a terrible loss against the Jets. I probably sh shouldn't even put them in my top 16, but I did anyway. Um, next up for them at Kansas City. Number 13 is the Los Angeles Rams. Coming off the worst loss of the Sean McVay era at home against the Ravens on Monday Night Football. Now everybody's doubting this team. Coming up for them on Sunday at the Cardinals. 20, or I'm sorry, number 12 is the Buffalo Bills. Coming off the win over the Broncos, their defense played well. Next up for Buffalo at Dallas. The biggest test of their season to determine whether they're for real or not. Number 11 is the Indianapolis Colts. Coming off a disappointing loss against the Texans on Thursday Night Football. Next up for them, they host the Titans in a big division game. 10 is the Kansas City Chiefs. Coming off a bye. And coming up for them is a date with the Oakland Raiders at home. 9 o'clock is the Dallas Cowboys. Or I should say 9. 9 o'clock. 9 is the Dallas Cowboys coming off the loss against New England. They're a better team than what they've shown. The, the weather was really bad in that game. Or else that's a much higher scoring game than it was. And both quarterbacks, I think, would have looked better. Next up, a potential get-right spot against the Bills. 8 is the Texans. Coming off the nice win over Indy. Coming up for them. They have a big test. The biggest test of their season at home against the New Orleans, or the New England Patriots. Seven is the Seattle Seahawks. Coming off the win in Philly. Coming up for them is a big test at home against the Minnesota Vikings. Number six is the Green Bay Packers. That was a bad loss against San Francisco on Sunday Night Football. Next up for them, a potential get right spot at the Giants. Five is the Minnesota Vikings. A bye. And then before that, they had that comeback against the Broncos. They get Adam Thielen back for their big Monday night game against Seattle. So I'm really looking forward to that. Number four is the New England Patriots. 
didn't look all that special against the Cowboys. Their defense carried them in that game. And some help with from uh, Jason Garrett. <laughs> Number three is the San Francisco 49ers. They looked really good on uh, Sunday Night Football against the Packers. Coming up for them at the Ravens in what is perhaps the game of the year in the NFL. I don't get why that's a 1 o'clock game. Like, that's very bizarre. I think it's because they didn't want to flex New England out of prime time. And Brady's so special and all. But they could have just flexed this to 425, but it's too late now. And it's just really unfortunate for so many people out there that they won't see this great game. Number two is the New Orleans Saints. Barely get by Carolina courtesy of a game-winning field by by Will Lutz. Next up for them, they are at the Falcons tomorrow night. And on number one... For the second week in a row, the Baltimore Ravens, they're certainly the best team in the league right now. They're the Super Bowl favorites. Lamar's your MVP favorite. That was a statement win against the Ravens, I mean against the Rams, to really prove who the Ravens really are. Next up for them, home against the San Francisco 49ers in a Super Bowl 47 rematch. And the only thing that's Still the same within those two teams that John Harbaugh is still the coach of the Baltimore Ravens. But yeah, so many changes from 2013 and now between these two teams. And I don't think these teams have, I think they've only met once since then, right? Yeah, that would make sense. I'd say that would have been in the 2016 season. They probably played one another in San Francisco, though, because this time around it's obviously in Baltimore. Now I'm going to do picks for week 14 of the college football season. I'm going to give out all my picks. And I'm going to call this something else instead of the uh, Super 10, which would normally do five college picks and five NFL picks. So this week, because it's Thanksgiving, I have eight NFL picks and... 11 college picks. So that adds up to 19. 19 is an odd number. So I'm going to add one more NFL game to the card. And I think I know where I'm going to go. Yeah. Yeah. All right, now I'm at 20. I'm at 9 NFL and 11 college. So we're going to start at college football, and we're going to start a game with a game that's in my 20 pack for the week, the 20 turkey pack, I'm going to call it, for Thanksgiving. And that is Ole Miss at Mississippi State. Mississippi State is giving 2.5 points. The over-under is 58. I am going to take Ole Miss getting the two and a half. I think they win the game outright. They're plus 115 on the money line. They've been the better team for the last few weeks. And I think they're going to spoil Mississippi State's bull hopes as Joe Moorhead might be looking for a new job. Hello, Rutgers. So give me Ole Miss getting the two and a half. That's the first of 20 in the... uh, the Turkey 20, I'm going to call it. The Turkey 20 Thanksgiving show. So uh, that's the first one in in that bunch. So I'm going to say TTT whenever one of those picks will come up. And Ole Miss is the first of 20 TTTs. So TTT obviously stands for um, Turkey 20 Thanksgiving. The Thanksgiving, thir- the Thanksgiving Turkey 20. We're going to call it that. Thanksgiving Turkey 20. All right, now we're on Friday. Texas Tech, Texas. Texas is giving 10, the over under 63. I am going to take Texas minus the 10. Get right spot against Texas Tech. Granted, it's a rivalry game. So give me Texas minus 10. I think Tom Herman will get his boys ready to go to avoid a possible losing season here. TTT, Virginia Tech. Against Virginia. Virginia Tech's laying 3D. Over-under is 47.5. And yes, this is a TTT pick. 
And I'm going to take the Cavs getting the three. They're plus 120 on the money line. Rivalry game. Um, Virginia hasn't been Virginia Tech in forever, and I think this is their opportunity to do so for the right to play Clemson in the ACC title game. So give me Virginia plus the three. And it's weird saying that because I think Virginia Tech is better equipped to give a game to Clemson than Virginia. And, but I do think Virginia is going to win this game because they're home. And they haven't beaten Virginia in forever, or Virginia Tech in forever, and I think this is a golden opportunity. So give me Virginia plus the three in my second game of the TTT. Toledo, Central Michigan. Central Michigan's giving 10 and a half. The over under 64 and a half. Give me the over 64 and a half. This is going to be a shootout between these two teams. A lot of points. Central Michigan gets the win. Miami of Ohio and Ball State. Miami of Ohio is getting three. The over under is 56. Give me Miami of Ohio getting three. They're plus 25 on the money line. I know the argument is that they're looking ahead to the MAC title game. That's certainly a good argument, but. What does Ball State have to play for? Oh, they're in pride. So give me Miami of Ohio getting three. I think they win the game outright. Bowling Green, Buffalo. Buffalo's laying 29. The over under is 51 and a half. Give me the over in this game. I think that Buffalo might be doing this by themselves. Kent State and Eastern Michigan. Eastern Michigan's laying four and a half. The over under is 66 and a half. TTT. Give me Kent State plus four and a half. I think they can win the game outright, but Kent State, if they get the win, they're in a bowl game. So give me the points here, and I think this is um, either a Kent State win or they cover. So um, give me uh, Kent State getting the 4.5. It's plus 163 on the money line. 230, Missouri and Arkansas. Missouri's laying 12.5. The over under is 53.5. Hold your nose. I'm taking Arkansas getting the 12.5. Missouri's... Um, season's essentially over. They are not going to a bowl game. They are denied. So um, I think they'll probably win the game, but I just think it's closer. And this is Arkansas's last stand. So giving Arkansas plus 12 and a half. TTT. Iowa and Nebraska. Nebraska's getting five and a half. The over under is 44 and a half. Give me Nebraska plus the five and a half. I think they win the game outright. They're plus 175 on the money line. They've a bowl spot to play for, and I think they'll get it done at home. 3.30, Boise State, Colorado State. Boise's laying 13.5. The over-under is 57.5. Give me Boise minus the points. Don't feel good about it, but Boise has to show a little something to prove themselves to possibly be the New Year's Six Bowl representative from the group of five. Next up, Cincinnati, Memphis. Cincinnati's giving 11, or getting 11. The over under 57 and a half. TTT. Give me Cincinnati plus the 11. I think this is a closer than expected game. This line is so big. I don't get why this line is so big. Is Cincinnati like sitting people? Like it's not a lock. Memphis wins this game. So give me Cincinnati plus 11. In what is... My fifth of TTT. TTT. Four o'clock. Washington State and Washington. Washington's giving seven and a half. The over under 63 and a half. Give me Wazoo plus the seven and a half. This is the last of my TTTs for the Friday games. I just think this is a closer uh, game than that spread. I like that I'm getting the hook. And I'm going to say that the Huskies win the game, but the Cougars cover. 415 West Virginia TCU. TCU is giving 13 and a half. The over-under is 43 and a half. Give me the Mountaineers plus the 13 and a half. I think TCU wins. They need this game for a bowl, but I just think that West Virginia will hang around a little bit because of their defense. 5 o'clock, Arkansas State in South Alabama. Arkansas State's laying 11. The over-under is 56. Give me Arkansas minus 11. I'm glad this line went down. It was at 13 and a half. went down to 11. I think that they cover this easily, quite frankly. 6 o'clock, App State and Troy. App State's laying 13. The over under 62 and a half. This is my upset special of the weekend. Troy, plus 13. They're plus 350 on the money line. App State's looking ahead to the title game in the conference. And they also have a shot at, at a New Year's Six as well. 
if some shit goes haywire. So give me Troy plus the 13. I, they're plus 350 on the money line. Troy's playing for a bull spot. 8 o'clock ESPN, South Florida and UCF. UCF's laying 22 over under 62 and a half. Give me South Florida plus the points. They're not winning the game outright, but I just think it's closer than that. I just think UCF wins by like 13 rather than 22 or 23 points. I just think it's a lot closer than that. Saturday, you have Georgia and Georgia Tech. Georgia's laying 28. The over under is 46 and a half. Give me the under. Georgia's defense, I think, will slow down Georgia Tech's offense. And I think that the Bulldogs will get a win somewhere in like that. Uh, let's go 27 to 13 or something like that. Clemson in South Carolina. Clemson's giving 27. The over-under is 51. Give me the over in this game. I think that these two teams are going to score up and down the field, back and forth, back and forth. Clemson might do it by themselves, but I'm not sure. Give me Clemson the win, 45-24. Ohio State, Michigan. Ohio State's laying 9. The over-under is 50. Give me... Ohio State minus a 9. TTT. This is certainly a TTT. Getting Ohio State at under double digits is fantastic. They're just way better than Michigan. And there's going to be a lot of Harbaugh might get fired rumors. So give me Ohio State minus a 9. Northwestern Illinois. Illinois is laying 8. The over under is 43.5. Give me Illinois minus the 8. Northwestern stinks. Let's move on. Indiana and Purdue. Indiana's giving 6.5. The over-under is 56.5. Give me the over. This is going to be a shootout. I think Indiana probably wins. FIU and Marshall. Marshall's giving 7.5. The over-under is 49.5. Give me Marshall minus the points. Tulsa and East Carolina. Tulsa is giving 5.5. The over-under 61. Give me East Carolina plus 5.5. Plus 170 on the money line. I think they went out right. Louisville, Kentucky. Kentucky's minus 3. The over-under is 53.5. Don't feel good about this one, but give me Kentucky minus the 3. I'm glad it went down from three and a half to three, so there's a push possibility. Texas State and Coastal Carolina. Coastal's giving seven. The over-under is 53 and a half. Give me Texas State getting the seven here. I just think this is a closer-than-expected game. I don't think Coastal Carolina should be giving seven against anybody. 12-30, Wake Forest, Syracuse. Wake's giving three and a half. The over-under is 69. Give me Wake minus the three and a half. I think Syracuse is very overvalued right now, and I think Wake's undervalued because people are judging them from that Clemson loss. 2 o'clock, Wyoming and Air Force. Air Force is giving 10.5. The over-under is 41. Give me Wyoming plus the 10.5. I think their defense will keep them in the game, but Air Force will win it. 2 o'clock, Middle Tennessee, Western Kentucky. Western's giving 8. The over-under is 47.5. Give me Western minus 8. They're a better team than Middle Tennessee. Charlotte Old Dominion. Charlotte's laying 9.5. The over-under is 50. Give me... The hmm the under. I don't feel certain about it, but I just think Old Dominion just stinks. I think Charlotte probably wins like thirty five to ten or something like that. So give me the under in the Charlotte Old Dominion game. New Mexico State and Liberty. Liberty's giving 14 over under 65 and a half. This is an easy over. I know I had the over in the first time these two teams met and it didn't come through, but I think ultimately this time around it will. 3 o'clock, Rice and UTEP. Rice is giving 6 and a half. The over under is 44. I'm going to hold my nose here and take UTEP getting the points. <laughs> well, it just stinks because this line stinks and Rice stinks. They have won back-to-back -back games. UTEP is plus 185 on the money line. I don't think UTEP will win, but I just think it's closer than 6.5 because I think they're overvaluing Rice right now. UNLV in Nevada. Nevada's laying 7.5. The over-under is 52.5. Give me UNLV plus the points. Nevada already has a bowl game locked up. UNLV has its new intern coach right now. I'm going to say that this is a closer than 7.5 game. 3.30 Wisconsin and Minnesota. Wisconsin's laying a flat three. The over-under is 47.5. TTT. Give me Minnesota plus the three. Plus 125 
on the money line. I think they win the game outright. This reminds me a little bit of the Penn State game. Past perception is that uh, Wisconsin's clearly better than Minnesota. Minnesota's a fraud and yada yada. And now people are looking at it like, oh, Penn State lost to Ohio State and Penn State's really not that good, blah, blah, blah. But no, Minnesota's a good team. P.J. Flex out of that boat row, and I like that it's at three. Now, just in case Wisconsin wins by three, then it's a push. So give me Minnesota again in the three. I think they win the game outright. I don't think I'll need those points. Alabama and Auburn. Alabama's giving three and a half. The over on there's 50. This is a really hard call, but I'm taking Auburn getting the three and a half. Plus 140 on the money line. I think Alabama's season essentially ends on Saturday. Their playoff hopes crash and die and burn as Bo Nix leads Auburn to a second win in three years for Auburn over Alabama. Rutgers at Penn State. Penn State's laying a whopping, I believe it was 38. The over-under is 49, giving the over. I think Penn State could potentially do it by themselves. Baylor-Kansas. Baylor's laying 14. The over-under is 52. So give me Baylor minus 14. They're better than Kansas. Fair and square. Boston College and Pitt. Pitt's laying 9.5. The over-under is 52. Give me Boston College plus the points. They're playing for a bowl game here. And I think that they will come close, but no cigar. I think Pitt wins, but BC covers. Miami and Duke. Miami's laying 9.5. The over-under is 45.5. This is a get-right spot for the Hurricanes. I think they'll get it done and win by double digits. I'm laying the points. UConn Temple. Temple's laying 28. The over-under is 49.5. I love the over in this game. I think that these teams are going to score and score and score. I think Temple can do it by themselves. I don't know about UConn scoring and scoring and scoring, but I meant Temple, really. Maryland and Michigan State. Sparty's laying 22 and a half. The over-under is 48 and a half. Give me Maryland plus the 22 and a half. This is a disgusting play, I know. But I know they were big favorites against Rutgers, but they barely covered him. Plus, that was Rutgers. Maryland's a little better than Rutgers, right? So give me Maryland getting the 22 and a half, and I think they win. I'm saying you know, Sparty wins by like 14 or 15. Southern Miss and FAU. FA is laying 7.5, the over under 54. Give me Southern Miss getting the touchdown and a half. I think this game is closer than the spread suggests. UTSA and Louisiana Tech. La Tech's laying 20, the over under 57. Give me La Tech minus 20. They're just better than UTSA. 4 o'clock, Oregon State in Oregon. Oregon's laying 19, the over under 65.5. TTT. Give me Oregon State plus the 19. Rivalry game. What kind of reaction will the Ducks have after seeing their playoff hopes crashed and died last week? So give me Oregon State plus the 19. I think the Ducks win by 13. Notre Dame and Stanford. Notre Dame's laying 16 and a half. The over-under is 50. Give me the under. I think that Notre Dame's defense will step up here. Stanford's offense is literally nothing. They're not going to a bowl game. This is probably the worst year Stanford's ever had under David Shaw. So give me Notre Dame um, and Stanford under 50. Utah State in New Mexico. Utah State is giving 10 and a half. They over under 63 and a half. Tough call, but I'm taking Utah State plus, or I'm sorry, minus 10 and a half. New Mexico let go of Bob Davey the other day, or they're letting him coach his finale, but they're firing him. So, uh, Give me Utah State minus the 10.5 on the road. Tulane and SMU. SMU is laying 3.5. The over under 71.5. Give me the over. This is a shootout, but I'm going to say it's SMU wins. Vandy and Tennessee. Tennessee is laying 22. The over under is 45.5. This is another disgusting one, but I'm taking Vandy plus the 22. I think they lose by 17. UAB and North Texas. UAB is laying 3.5. The over under is 51.5. Tough one, but give me the over 51.5. I think that both these teams are going to score and score and score. Mason Fine will throw in the UAB defense. I just don't like that the line is 3.5 rather than 3 for me to lay the points at UAB. So give me the over 51.5. 
6 o'clock, Georgia State and Georgia Southern. Southern's laying 7.5. The over under 58. Give me Georgia State getting the touchdown in the hook. The hook is delightful here. And I'm going to say that Georgia Southern wins the game by 4. 7 o'clock, Texas A&M and LSU. LSU's laying 17.5. The over under is 64. Give me LSU minus the 17.5. They're just way better than Texas A&M. A&M hung around with Georgia last week. That was like their Super Bowl-ish kind of game. So give me LSU minus the 17.5. They really have to show something to the committee after being dropped down to number 2. Iowa State and Kansas State. Kansas State is getting 4.5. The over under is 47. TTT. Kansas State is one of the TTTs. They're getting 4.5 plus 155. Or I'm sorry, 1 plus 165 on the money line. I think they went out right. So give me the Wildcats of Kansas State getting the 4.5 against Iowa State at home. Navy Houston. Navy's giving 8.5. The over under 58.5. This is an easy over. I almost made this a TTT, but I didn't. So give me the over in Navy Houston. And Navy will win by, now let's go, like, 45-36 or something like that. North Carolina and NC State. North Carolina is laying 90 over under 56 and a half. North Carolina is playing for a bowl game. Give me the Wolfpack and the points. I think North Carolina wins, but State covers. 7-30, Florida State and Florida. Give me, um... State getting the 17 and a half. The over under is 53 and a half. I just think this is a closer than expected game. I know FSC already has a bowl locked up, but I just think that uh, this game is closer than the point spread indicates. And I think that um, uh, they could exploit the Florida defense a little bit. Although I think Florida will score on Florida State. I'm going to say that Florida wins like. 35 to 24 or something like that. That would qualify as a FSU cover. Louisiana Monroe and New Louisiana Lafayette. Lafayette's only 21 over under 69. Give me Fun Row plus the 21. I just think this is a closer game than the point spread suggests. I think that Lafayette wins by two touchdowns rather than three. And I also like the over 69 as well. But the podcast play, Louisiana Monroe getting the 21. Colorado, Utah. Utah's only 20 and a half. The over-under is 49. Give me the under 49 here. Um, I don't think these two teams are going to score very much. I think Utah's defense will shut down Colorado's offense. I think Utah wins like 37 to 17 or something like that. But no, that wouldn't even add up to an under. So maybe 33, 33, 30, let's go 31-17. That's it. That would just sneak in there for the under. I apologize my for my poor math skills there. <laughs> Oklahoma State and Oklahoma. Oklahoma's laying 12 and a half. The over under is 69 and a half. Give me Oklahoma State getting the 12 and a half. Yes, I know. Oklahoma State's new quarterback stinks, but I just think this is a closer game than expected. Sam Hubbard will run wild on the Oklahoma defense. The West Virginia defense has been playing better than the Oklahoma defense of late. So give me Oklahoma State plus 12 and a half. I think they're kind of live here. They're plus 360 on the money line. I wanted to bet them outright, but. The quarterback downgrade scares me, so I'm going to say that the Sooners win, but the Cowboys cover in Bedlam. 9 o'clock, BYU and San Diego State. San Diego State is getting 3 over under 39. Give me San Diego State plus the 3. They're plus 128 on the money line, and I think they win this game like 21-17. Arizona and Arizona State. Arizona State's giving 13.5. The over under is 59.5. TTT. Arizona plus 13.5. I think letdown's coming for Herm Edwards' team a little bit. And I think that the Wildcats will hang inside the number in what could be uh, Kevin Sumlin's final game there. I think they'll play hard for him. So give me Arizona State to win this game like 40-33. to 33. I think it's a fun game between these two teams and the Zona covers. Cal and UCLA. Cal is 
getting a point and a half. The over-under is 51. Give me UCLA minus the point and a half. I just have a feeling that Chip Kelly's team will get up for this one and have a bit of a, hey, don't forget about us coming in the next year type of game as Cal's already locked up a bowl spot. Fresno State and San Jose State. Fresno's giving two. The over-under is 65. Give me San Jose State plus the two. They'll win the game outright. They're plus 112 on the money line. And last but not least, Army Hawaii. Hawaii's giving two and a half. The over-under is 56. I thought this line was going to be very, very high, but the fact that I was way, 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 way off on this line and the fact that Hawaii's only giving two and a half makes me pause and think, hey, Army's actually kind of due, aren't they? So give me Army plus two and a half. I think they win the game outright. Plus 115 on the money line. Now to the NFL picks. All my Thanksgiving games are TTTs, and I have five TTTs for Sunday. So, TTT, Bears, Lions. Bears minus four, over under 37. I like the Lions getting four, and I like the under two, but the podcast play will be under 37. I think the Lions win this game 19-16. I know they're going to be playing a different quarterback, but Mitch Trubisky is still the quarterback of the Chicago Bears, for the love of freaking God. So give me the under 37, and I think the Lions win this game 19-16, and the Lions are plus 180 on the money line. 4.30 on CBS, Jim Nance, Tony Romo, Tracy Wolfson on the call, and by the way, the first game is Buck Aikman and Andrews on Fox. So Bills-Cowboys, Cowboys laying 6.5, the over-under is 47. Cowboys coming off the loss against New England. Bills coming off the win over the Broncos. Get right spot for Dallas. Give me the minus 6.5 before it goes up to 7. And I think the Dallas wins this game comfortably, 31-17. 8-20 on NBC. Al Michaels, Chris Collinsworth, Michelle Tafoya on the call. Saints-Falcons. Saints coming off the wild win over the Panthers. Atlanta coming off a tough loss against the Bucks. Give me over 49. I think that this is a shootout. Both these teams are going to score. I believe my, Ryan will play. It looks like Julio Jones might play. I know Devontae Freeman's out, but that's okay. I think that Julio will go nuts. Calvin really have a nice game. And that will help Atlanta's offense. But the Saints' offense is unstoppable. Although Kamara's not totally 100%. LaMarcus Murray's been running for them a little bit. So give me the over 49. I think New Orleans wins this game 37-26. TTT, 49ers, Ravens, 1 o'clock, 49ers coming off the big-time win over the Packers, Ravens coming off the big-time Monday night win over the Rams, contrarian, but I'm going San Francisco getting the 6. I just think this is a closer-than-expected game. I think that their defense will get a couple stops here. My podcast play was going to be the over for this game. But the more I think about it, I think I'm getting some value here at the 49ers plus the 6. I'm going to say that Baltimore wins this game 27-23. Eagles-Dolphins. Eagles laying 9.5, the over under 44.5. Eagles coming off the bad loss against the Seahawks. Dolphins coming off the loss against the Browns. I am going to take under 44.5. I think this is a low-scoring game. I think Philly gets it done 26-16. Dolphins got a a garbage touchdown late to flirt around with the spread a little bit, assuming it goes up into double digits. Browns-Steelers. Browns giving two the over-unders 40. Browns coming off the win over the Dolphins. Steelers coming off the win at the Bengals. Delvin Hodges is now starting for them. I'm taking Pittsburgh getting the two. I think they went out right there, plus 116 on the money line. Revenge spot for the Steelers after losing to them in the game where the brawl happened. So give me Pittsburgh 24-20. TTT, Packers-Giants. Packers giving 6.5, the over under 45.5. Packers coming off the bad loss against the Niners on Sunday Night Football. Giants coming off the loss against the Bears. 
One of the TTT plays here is over 45 and a half. I think that both these offenses are going to score. I think Daniel Jones will have one of his better performances. He'll bounce back from a somewhat dis dis uh, discouraging-ish kind of game against the Bears. But granted, the Bears have a good defense, and Jones kind of did show flashes in that game. I think Jones will be a lot better against the weaker secondary. And I think Green Bay wins this game 33-24. So that's an over. 45 and a half. And I initially got it at 46 and a half, but it went down a point, so I like it even better now. Jets, Bengals. Jets giving three and a half the over under 41 and a half. Jets coming off the big win over the Raiders. Bengals coming off the loss against the Steelers. Andy Dalton back at quarterback, but give me the Jets minus the three and a half. I almost made this a TTT, but I did not. So give me Jets 31 16 minus the three and a half. Redskins Panthers. Panthers laying nine and a half. The over under thirty nine and a half. Washington coming off their win over the Lions. Panthers coming off that tough loss over the Saints, but they lost on the field goal. This is a whole Janos play. So give me the Redskins getting nine and a half. Um, this is just a play against Kyle Allen, because I'm not really sold on him. He had a nice bounce-back game last week against the Saints after that Falcons loss, but Haskins has kind of looked better lately, and I just think that Washington can keep it close. So give me Carolina the win, 24-17. Although the over is somewhat enticing in that game, because 24 plus 17 equals 41. And the over under is 39 and a half. Titans Colts. Colts giving two and a half. The over under is 43 and a half. TTT. Titans coming off the win over the Jags. Colts coming off the loss in Houston against the Texans. Give me the Colts minus two and a half. I just love getting the Colts under a field goal at home. Granted, Vinatieri is a problem this year and hasn't been himself. He's washed up. So give me Indy to win 23-17 in what should be a low-scoring game with the defenses playing well, but I think the difference in this game is the Colts' offensive line and run game and their clock control and coaching will be the difference in this one. I would take Frank Reich over Mike Vrabel 24-7. Last one in the 1 o'clock slate, Tampa Bay-Jacksonville. Jacksonville's laying one over under 48 and a half. Tampa Bay is coming off the win over the Falcons. Jacksonville is coming off a loss against the Titans. Normally, this would be a fun situational spot to bet on the Jaguars. But I think these two teams are fairly even. And I like the total better in this game than the side. It's so giving the over 48 and a half. I think that. Leonard Fournette will have a big game. I think that Ronald Jones will have a big game. They'll be going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. These two teams down the field. I think Jacksonville wins this one 27-26. So I think it's a push. 4 o'clock Rams, Cardinals. Rams giving 3 to over under 47.5. Rams coming off that terrible loss against the Ravens on Monday Night Football. Cardinals coming off a buy-in two weeks ago. They lost against the 49ers in what was a crazy, crazy finish to that game. I kind of like what I've seen from the Cardinals of late. They're a good offense that can score some points. So give me Arizona plus the three, and they are plus 143 on the money line. I think the Cardinals win this game out. We're a 23-20 on a late field goal. Although I probably should have gone higher in terms of a score because I think that over 47 and a half can hit as well. But I just think that the Rams defense kind of bounces back a little bit. But I just um, really like Kyler to make some plays in that um, run game to really like manage clock and stuff. So 23-20 Arizona. Raiders Chiefs. Chiefs giving 9.5 the over under 51 and a half. TTT, Raiders coming off the bad loss against the Jets. Chiefs coming off a bye two weeks ago, the win over the Chargers. 
Oakland getting 9.5 is very enticing. But I love the over 51.5, and that is the TTT in this game. I'm going to say that KC wins 35-27. So that will just end up at 62. Chargers, Broncos. Chargers giving 2.5. The over under is 38.5. Chargers coming off a bye two weeks ago. They lost against the Chiefs in Mexico City. Broncos coming off the loss against the Bills. I like the over 38.5. I think there's a chance that Drew Locke plays. And I think that this is going to be a fun, entertaining game. Philip Lindsay will have a good game. I'm not in love with the Chargers' run defense, even though they have Joey Bosa. Um, I think that the Charger offense will score some points on Denver. And I kind of like that over, 38.5. I think that's a low number. I think that Denver's actually going to win the game on the field, actually, regardless of who's at quarterback. Because... I just don't love the Chargers as a favorite. This is more of an anti-Chargers pick than a pro-Broncos pick in terms of straight up. I'm going 24-23 Broncos. But the player for this game is over 38 and a half. Sunday night football. Patriots. Texans. 8-20. NBC. Al Michaels. Chris Collinsworth. Michelle Tofoya on the call. Houston is getting 3D over and there's 45 and a half. TTT. Give me Houston plus the three. The Texans will beat the Patriots outright. 20 to 17. So the under 45 and a half is very enticing as well. Houston plus 140 in the money line. I think that the Sean Watson will have some success against the Patriots. This is a big spot for him to get redemption a little bit. Even though he was good in that Colts game. But I think that stink of that Ravens game kind of still on this team a little bit from a media standpoint. So give me Houston plus the three. I think they win the game outright. Plus one three and the money line. Monday Night Football. 8-15 ESPN. Joe Tessitore. Booger McFarlane. Lisa Salter's on the call. Vikings. Seahawks. Vikings giving 3D over under 49. Vikings coming off the... By and two weeks ago, they had that comeback win over the Broncos. Seahawks coming off the win over the Eagles. I don't like the flat three. So my final TTT is over 49. I think this is a shootout. I think the Viking defense has been a little vulnerable this year, especially against the good teams. It was vulnerable against Dallas. It was vulnerable against Green Bay earlier in the year. KC even made it look vulnerable when they played them. It was vulnerable against Denver in that first half before the comeback. And I think Russell Wilson will make it vulnerable here. And I'm taking Seattle to win this game 30-27. to So that's it for the Thanksgiving picks for college football and the NFL. I should say the Thanksgiving weekend picks. Before we do... Best bet, I have to talk about some MLB stuff. There was a trade this morning between the Brewers and the Padres. A very interesting trade, which surprised me a lot. And I mean a lot. San Diego sends Luis Urias, their second baseman, and left-handed pitcher Eric Lauer to the Brewers for prospect outfielder Trent Grisham and right-handed pitcher Zach Davies, who is a starter for them. Bizarre trade. So Luis Urias, who played second base for the Padres, is moving to shortstop. So the Brewers' middle infield next year is going to be Luis Urias and Keston Ura. That's a nice double play combo, and Urias showed flashes in the big leagues at times last year or this past season, and same for Grisham when he got called up in September. He had six home runs for the Brewers on the big league level in like 27 or 28 on in the minors. Um, Grisham's obviously a lefty bat. Urias is a righty bat. 
Lauer Davies, I think that part of it is somewhat of a wash. Lauer's had some moments and Davies has had some moments. But I think the better pitcher of the two is Davies. And the better position player of the two, from an upside standpoint, in my opinion, is Urias. And now the Padres have a little bit of an outfield jam. They have Grisham. They have Hunter Renfro. They have um, a couple other guys. They have uh, the kid that they acquired from the Reds. Um, they traded away uh, from Reyes to Cleveland at the deadline. So they kind of didn't have an outfield spot open. And there's some other guys on that team too. Will Myers, who I think they have playing a position, if I'm not mistaken. They had him play positions. But then they got Hosmer, and then they moved him back to the outfield. So it's going to be interesting to see what this trade leads to. And then the Padres went out and signed Drew Pomeranz to a four-year deal. That's crazy. A red-hot finish out of the bullpen for the Brewers parlayed him a four-year deal. That's crazy. And I was not a fan of this guy as a Red Sox. He was really underwhelming. And meanwhile, the prospect they gave up for him at the time was a highly touted one. Has not panned out with the Padres. I forget the young uh, pitcher's name. Anderson Espinosa. There we go. That was the pitcher's name that San Diego got in that trade. But San Diego ends up getting Pomeranz back, and they're going to be using him out of the bullpen. So, I'm interested to see what the number is. If it's anything more than the Andrew Miller contract that he got from the Yankees a few years ago, then that is utterly ridiculous. I get it, he was hot down the stretch, but I'm really not that sold. But yeah, some of these free agent pickups I haven't really been fans of yet the season from a contract standpoint. Like, I think Atlanta overpaid for Darno. I talked about that on the podcast. I think it was smart for them to bring back Marcakis as like a outfielder slash clubhouse leader, but I don't think he'll get the playing time like he did last year. I think he'll be a fourth outfielder slash pinch hitter for them. Um, they bring back Tyler Flowers. I like the Will Smith signing for Atlanta. I think that was a better pickup than Drew Pomeranz with the Padres. Because I think Will Smith had a good year last year. And probably San Francisco should have traded him. But they didn't. Um, other baseball news. Um, Yolmer Sanchez and Greg Bird each cleared waivers. And they're free agents. Two young players that it didn't really work out for them on their respective teams. Yolmer Sanchez clearing waivers clears up a spot in the White Sox. Infield. And that's probably for their young prospect. Nick Madrigal. And then Greg Bird obviously. Injury-prone player, hit the big home run off Andrew Miller in the 2017 playoffs for the Yankees in Game 3 in the ALDS. But other than that, he really hasn't done anything majorly special. So it's not surprising they're getting rid of him. And now their first base situations between Luke Voigt and Mike Ford. And the Rays designated Jesus Aguilar for assignment. Um... He just was a one-year wonder. I tried telling everybody that a few years ago in 2017 or 18, and it was 18, that he was a one-year trick pony, and I was proven right. And he's now a free agent. We'll see which team decides to pick him up and gives him a little test run. And former Cub Carl Edwards Jr. signs with the Seattle Mariners. One-year minimum wage, 950 grand. We'll see if a change of scenery works out for uh, Carl Edwards Jr., who... Um, Really didn't live up to expectations with the Cubs when it was all said and done. In the managerial hiring, Derek Shelton was hired by the Pirates to be their next manager. They finally hire a manager before Thanksgiving. Shelton has spent 15 years of coaching experience in the last two seasons as the bench coach of the Minnesota Twins. He did a really good job under Rocco Baldelli helping that team to the playoffs. We'll see if Shelton brings up some of that culture that um, Baldelli provided with Minnesota this past season. And last but not least, my final best bet of the day 
brought to you by DraftKings. Well, my final best bet before Thanksgiving. So without further ado, here we go. We'll go to college basketball because that's where all the fun stuff is with money lines and whatnot. We'll take Rhode Island against Manhattan. We'll take Santa Clara against Denver. We'll go with SMU over Hartford. We'll take Little Rock over Arkansas, or I'm sorry, Alcorn State. We'll take Oregon State over San Jose State. So that's five. Now we'll switch to the NBA, pick some big favorites there. Celtics, 76ers, Toronto, um, Milwaukee. I wanted to take Houston, but I couldn't because Miami's a good team in their own right. Um, don't want to take the Clippers on the second of a back-to-back. That could be some injury um, slash uh, uh, maintenance day for Kawhi potentially. Don't want to take the Suns. I really don't trust them yet. So that's nine plus one forty-eight. Let's wager uh, two dollars payout of four dollars and ninety-seven cents. That's it for the podcast today. Um, Hope you guys have a happy Thanksgiving, and I'll be back to recap everything on Monday.